Today's episode is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all the while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone, from adults to teens to children, could find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And on today's episode of Real Talk Christian, we're sitting down with Rodney Buse of the podcast, What's in the Bible? Talking about false teachers in the church. How can we spot them? What does the Bible say? And what should we do if we run across one? Fuller, are you ready to get educated? Let's go. Let's go. Fuller. What's up, Mark? Dude, it's been a fun setup day today. It, it, we got a new computer. We got a new so computer. It's it's a little bit. Which means uh, hopefully you two, I don't know if it still looks better or sounds better, but at least it works better on our end. Right. Yeah. It, Usually, it looks good to us. If you're a computer guy, normally we run our stuff at uh, not even 1080. We run at 720. Yeah. And um, we have like 24 frames per second. Right. Real and we slow. we max out like right. at like 80% CPU. Yeah. Well, today we're at fifteen percent. We're at fifteen percent with thirty frames per second, right. kicking at full HDMI, baby. Yeah, we be buddy. rolling. Yeah, but you know, buddy. Let's be honest. Most people listen to audio, and they're like, you know what? We don't care about video. We just want to hear your beautiful voices to serenade us as we drive to work in the morning. That's what, what they want. What planet are you living on? <laughs> uh, apparently, my own planet is is what it is. But, dude, how are you doing, I'm my doing friend? Good, my friend, how about yourself? Um. I'm excited about tonight's I'm episode. excited. We got to keep the banter down because we got to make we, sure we give Roddy we, as much time as we can. Exactly. So we probably should just jump into our uh, Would You Rather oh, questionnaire Oh, just get, do fast. that, and then we'll talk about the interesting coffee we're drinking tonight. Oh, okay. All right. What, all what right. do we got for the questionnaire? Right. So here we go. We're going to do two Would You Rathers, all right? Okay. All right. So would you rather have a headache or have a sore throat? Um. Oh, I don't know. Um. Will my headache go away if I drink more caffeine? I don't know. It just says that's not the. I, I would go with option. a headache and then just rock the ibuprofen. All right, I'm gonna go with the sore throat. Cause really, you take a lozenger and like numb your throat. That's and then true, you but I feel like I talk all day for work. Yeah, so, so it's what, like that's right. so you're saying headache. I'm <laughs> saying say sore headache. throat. So 49% say headache, 51% say sore throat. Oh, don't worry, Rodney. We're gonna ask you these questions when we get you on the on the show here in a second. Don't oh. worry. All right, so. Would you rather be hysterically funny or be absolutely beautiful? You mean what am I already? <laughs> oh, I'm obviously not the funny one in our hey, relationship. We're talking about false teachers, not. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, sheesh. So, what would you Whoa, rather be? I would rather be beautiful. I'd rather be funny. So, but see, forty-two percent funny, fifty-eight percent beautiful. I'm gonna be very careful with the next words I say. Hey, Proverbs says beauty fades, right? That's true. <laughs> That's true. But so, in our relationship, right? Normally, like I'm like not in our relationship. Relationship, but mine and best relationship. I'm I'm a I'm a goober. I'm goofy. Like I'm just no. a dork. Like that's just who I am, right? Not like you. I'm just my jokes are dad jokes and like little doo-doo-tsh. like that's that's how I roll. I'm very good on the spot on a microphone for that. Beth is just funny. She is just funny. And so when we first started getting together, she goes, "You know, all your college kids and teenagers are going to love me because I'm funnier than you, right?" I'm like, <laughs> "Okay," and it's true, right? It's true. So, so either what, way, why don't we talk about the coffee we're coffee, drinking tonight? Do, you talk about it because you brought. The, I I came okay. prepared to do some Aeropress, some I know. espresso. So Janiel goes, I want to see you guys. See, this is a coffee sponsored by Janiel Fuller. There you go. Uh, she said, I want to see you guys drink the Coca Cola with coffees, and I'm like, that sounds disgusting. We're opening them and right so now. And so you you did the uh, I'm you doing got the, the caramel, caramel, and I've got. I the, didn't shake it because I was scared if I'd shake it. I've got it the would yeah, me too. So I've got the vanilla. Oh, that's different. Oh. Um, what do they do? Put a bunch of fake caramel in this? Um, I don't know. 
Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't. I would say I would never buy it again. Um, <laughs> I like something else in my Coke, but not this. Don't like coffee in my Coke. Um, that's for sure. I'm Reformed Baptist, so I can say that. You right? want to try that one? And I'll try I'll, yours. I'll try that one. Right, I'll try that go. one. Oh, yeah. You can keep that one. You can keep that one. I don't want that one. <laughs> I want this They're one. They're both disgusting. They're both disgusting. <laughs> but this would be a decent hit if you knew what you were expecting. But for us who just mm. drink coffee, it's like. It's too much ickies. Mm. <laughs> it's mm. just, I don't like coffee too, with my Coke. I'm just going gonna, gonna to let the people interpret what I'm saying. I don't like the coffee Co- with coffee my Coke. Coffee and a kind of Coke. So either way, man, I feel like, you know, we've been letting the poor man sit there for too long. I think so. we should bring him in. And while you bring them in, I'm going to look. Do, I'm did bringing we, them in. Did we look to see if we had any reviews? I did not look. Okay, Rodney, we had. Okay, have you had this crap before? This Coca Cola coffee? No, no, I have not. Thank goodness you have it because <laughs> it's bad. That when you guys were describing that and just seeing the expressions on your face, just made me say N- no. <laughs> I yeah. feel like you need to go to like Walgreens and get one though at some point, Rodney. Just to it's like upset. Do it on your podcast. Bad. Oh. You got to do it on your podcast. Oh. With the, the one you do with your pastor, you got to make him drink it. Ooh, you don't drink it, make yes. him drink it. Yeah, because I'm not at the table for that one. Right, you're you behind go. the camera. So, there you go. Oh right, goodness. So, drink so before we let you introduce yourself, Ooh. Rodney, we're gonna ask you the same questions that that we just okay. answered here. So, so, would you rather have a headache or a sore throat? Oh, definitely a headache. The headache. <laughs> I, I can't deal with the sore throat. I can't deal with it. Nope. All right. Uh-uh. Especially as a podcaster, you got to oh, have I'm, good yeah. good throat. Oh, see, I can't think properly when I have a headache. Like, I just can't formulate thoughts anymore. Like, <laughs> I have so many me. kids. It just it is what it is. You, yeah, your whole it life's just, a headache. It just it is what it is. <laughs> we had, okay, so out of all seven kids, today we only had one. In the yeah, house today. We had one. Yeah. We, had, we had little Mia. She's our little, she's one of our three two-year-olds. She's going to turn three at your, at, uh, literally like a week. And the house was quiet. We went, me and her went for a walk with my coffee in the wagon this morning around like, I don't know, eight o'clock. We were still kind of like the, the dew on the ground. She helped me water the flowers, did some stuff. And then I worked and she just watched Paw Patrol and beat bopped around my office. Nice. And I'm like, holy crap. I forgot how nice this was. Right. Well, we got another but, would, you, would you rather. Oh, another would you rather. I took yeah. it over. I yeah. took it over. So would you rather be hysterically funny or absolutely beautiful? Hmm. Well, I'm already one. <laughs> already one. Which should, one? We, should we ask should your we wife which one? <laughs> so I'm already really funny. That's oh. what. <laughs> Wait, was that a joke? No, I, that, you know, I think I would. I would rather be funny. Yeah. Than, than absolutely beautiful because yeah, I think what you said earlier makes a total you know amount of sense and it is in the Bible. Beauty See things. what's in the Bible. <laughs> but what does the Bible say? Right? Yeah, now right. what's in because what's in the Bible is uh, dude from Veggie Tales. Oh, um, uh, come on, uh, Phil, Phil, Phil Vischer. Vischer. Yeah, I was gonna Holy say Post Bob. podcast. You know he has a podcast, right? Holy yes. Post podcast. Yep, I do. Yep. Bob, Bob, and Larry. He plays Bob. Did you uh, see? Bob, actually, Rodney, I think you saw the post I posted on Instagram today, yes, where it was I like did. Bob and Larry, and it was a bottle of ketchup, and it yes, was a bottle of relish. It. Yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> That was good. My, that was my good. My wife enjoyed that one too. Friday funnies. I, I also like the VBS like VBS reality VBS on a budget. Right. Yeah. It it's all, all fun. But anyway, let's jump in, dude. So let's do it. Rodney, right. tell us about yourself, what podcasts you do, the ministries you're involved with. Because okay. who is Rodney Buse? We're just going to sit back and let <laughs> you is? talk now. <laughs> who, who is? Uh, now, I mean, people know your name if they've listened for a while because you sent us coffee. Right. Yeah, we've mentioned mm-hmm. you a few times. Yep. So. All right. But no, yeah, go for it, man. That copy, right? Oh, oh good. I tried to order more, but the shipping cost the same as the coffee, so I didn't want to yeah, pay it's for it. Delicious. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah delicious. I, I need to talk to them about their shipping costs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's in a basin jar. If they just sent it in a Ziploc baggie, I'd be cool with that. Four dollars oh, shipping. Oh no, that's classy when you send it in the mason. It jar, is though. classy, and it keeps yes. it fresh. But too. again, I'm not paying the same amount for the shipping as I am the coffee. I but would. Anywho, <laughs> I would. No, I'll go for it, Rodney. 100%. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I mean, Rodney. for me, I can just drive down the road and get it. So right, there you go. <laughs> we don't do that. This I, I keep drinking this, but this is not growing on me. This Coke with coffee is yeah. not growing on that's, me. That's got to be disgusting. It but is. it's a nervous tick that I do. All right, go for it, man. All right, so uh, I spent 20 years in the Navy on submarines, and I came to Christ at age 28. I think in one of my episodes, I said 26, but I'm really bad at math. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was 28 when I came to Christ, which was about halfway through my career in the Navy. And after coming to Christ, um, and, and actually I, it's, it's interesting because I think I was tossed into this a little bit too early in my walk with Christ. Uh, I became a 
Protestant lay leader on a submarine because we don't have we don't have chaplains on mm. submarines. It's too small of a crew. Um, it's the same way on surface ships that are really small too, where they'll have a. I never heard of that. Have you heard of that? I, no. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so I did that for my last three commands in the Navy as a Protestant lay leader. Uh, that was a really big time growing experience for me because it really caused me to read into a lot of things that, um, most people don't in their walk with Christ. So for example, just to give you an example, we had the chaplain came down and did a, did an underway with us for like three days and he forgot his ebook. So I let him borrow mine. And when he got done with it, he's like, I have never seen a sailor who has the confessions of Augustine on his ebook. I've never seen, <laughs> I, I've never seen a sailor who has Tertullian on his ebook. You know, Holy cow. Well, yeah. So he's like, he was like, this is ridiculous. What, you know, I said, Hey, I got to study something. Right. You know, I got to learn something. Yeah. Most people are over here like having Furtick books or Hey, even Piper, but you're like, no, I want the confessions of Augustine. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is a good book though. It is good. Right. Yeah. I mean, how, how many new Christians, you know, that are actually reading the Westminster confessions, you know what None. I'm saying? So it should be more in all yeah, honesty. It should be. Or the creeds sure. learning, but we just had an episode, episode dropped about on the creeds. Creed, so and that was a great episode. And we're going to bring that up later because <laughs> there was something funny in that. that oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Did I pick my nose again? I'm worried about what, something we said that he's like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> what about that? A St. Nick moment. Mm. Uh, it may be. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I did that. Uh, I wrote when I retired from the Navy, um, I got a little bit, a lo little bit lost because when you lose that brotherhood that you've been kind of ingrained into for 20 years, mm -hmm. it's, it's an immediate loss mm -hmm. and you kind of go through almost like a, like a depression in a way and some anxiety with social anxiety. I mean, how do I deal with civilian life? And so I met up with some guys and started riding motorcycles with a group called bikers for Christ mm -hmm. here in Virginia beach. And that really kind of helped bring me back and helped me get through that period and on top of that, it also taught me about reaching people for Christ in the most extreme environments. Mm. Um, when you go into a clubhouse for the Hell's Angels, mm -hmm. or you <laughs> we, go into a we, clubhouse. We, have, we actually have one right here by where I live. I actually sold them my motorcycle to the Hell's Angels. Did you really? <laughs> yeah, and had a good conversation with them. Yeah, wow, so. but still. So when you, when you get into those environments and you start talking to those guys, you know, you find out they are still people, mm -hmm. but you also got to remember what they're capable of in, at the same time. Right. And so it was interesting, uh, reaching those guys for Christ and seeing guys who were in that environment come to Christ, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, it really helped me grow in my, I would say in my, in my, uh, ability to talk about Christ with anybody mm. because even, even down on a submarine, you, you know all those guys and they're like your family. So it's not as hard to, to approach people about Christ when you, when you know them really well. But when you're don't know this guy and you're talking to a guy whom is involved with who knows what, you know, I don't want to speculate, but yeah. you know, who knows what, right. Um, the, you, it, it's a whole different ball game because you could very easily in that situation end up with a size 15 boot in your chest. <laughs> So, or oh, a man. bullet in your head, <laughs> depending, yeah, yeah. depending. Seriously. That's, I mean, so, that's what they're known for. So, yeah. So it, it was, it was a really big time growing experience. Um, after that, um, after that, I, I, we ended up going through a couple bad church experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, not, um, that we had any loss of faith on our side whatsoever. It was just that we ended up with, and this kind of gets into where we ended up with, with the, um, with what we're looking for or what we're doing with, but what does the Bible say? Uh, we had two situations where we ended up in churches that I didn't know until I got behind the curtain in church leadership, that they were involved with some churches that were prosperity gospel, that they were uh, into word of faith movement mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And because of that, um, it was, it was kind of eye opening to, oh my goodness, these guys are teaching things that are non-scriptural. Right. And, um, so, and we're going to get into some of a little bit of that a, a little bit later. Uh, but, um, that was kind of a growing experience for me too. All everything, God prepares you along the way in your walk with, with, with Christ in everything you do. And so it came to where we ended up, I ended up with at water's edge church with my wife, um, pastor Steve Roby. He's a reformed theo you know, theologian type. Whoop, so whoop. <laughs> <laughs> now, interestingly enough, I was baptized in a Wesleyan church. Really? 
Yes. Wow. So, so, so that's an experience. <laughs> and, and so going to your church, they didn't make you get rebaptized because one faith, one baptism, right? Right. Right. Yeah. Because what now Waters Edge Church was originally a port, a part of Church of God, Anderson, Indiana. Mm-hmm. Hey, yep. We know them real well. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> we know them real well. Mm-hmm. Not in a bad way. Yep. Just it is what it is. Yeah. Bill Gaither. Yep. Yep. That's true. But the the thing is, is we ended up there, uh, which I think has been like the most growth that me and my wife have both had in our walk with Christ was uh, getting involved there, going through the elder process there. Um, well, like I said, it was a year long. Uh, we use the nine marks principles for church leadership. So they don't take it lightly. It's it's uh, becoming an elder isn't like just a political, hey, I'm going to run for office kind of thing. It right. is a long process and they want to make sure that you gel well with the guys that you do meet the, um, the, the first Timothy and Titus, you know, requirements for church leadership, which is really important. And you also have to be a teacher. You have to be able to teach. So that's where we ended up. We ended up doing coffee time Q and a at the water's edge with Steve Roby as the, as the host for that. And I had the equipment. So I'm like, Hey, you know, I can do this too. (laughs) (laughs) so so, yeah so i started doing but what does the bible say it's awesome yeah so and so for what does the bible say is that now this is me just curious is that sponsored by the church or is that more of just another ministry of the church okay so i originally started on my own on my uh youtube channel that's under my name Mm -hmm. and um when I first started off, I mean, I, I came out of the gate with some really, really rough edge stuff. And the pastor was like, and of course, right, I'm still submit to the, the authority of the, the elders of the church, right? right. Yep. I mean, that's important that you do that. And the pastor looked at me and said, hey, let's talk about tone real quick. <laughs> 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 because after 20 years of being on submarines, I mean, sarcasm and stuff like that was like, a natural language. To so, me. so you basically were like a Todd Friel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Old, old times 10. Yeah. <laughs> so, Cause Todd Friel kind of has that feel to him. So, oh, yes. goodness. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, it was, I was, I was pretty, uh, pretty sarcastic and pretty, you know, down and dirty with about some stuff. And he was like, eh, maybe you need to pull back a little bit. So I, I started up the new channel cause I wanted to completely relaunch yeah. separate from what I was doing originally. I mean, only had like 24 followers on YouTube at the time, so it wasn't that. Hey, know, still better than cool. us. I mean, we we barely got <laughs> nothing on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. but your podcast is doing you know really really well. Yeah, we're so. doing we're doing okay. We're doing okay. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I I started up. But what does the Bible say on a new channel? And I also had started the podcast at the same time. Um, actually, I started the podcast first. If you'll notice, if you look at my my YouTube channel and you look at my podcast, there's a few that are out of order. Hmm. And it's, I have, I have less videos than I have podcast episodes. So yeah, we all got, I mean, that's what we did. We started with just audio and then a a year later we added video and and here we are year three with a sponsor and a better computer. (laughs) We need a better camera, but we're getting there. (laughs) So with, with your show, what does the Bible say? I know you have the co-host. He looks like he's our age. Like he looks like a younger guy, right? Yes. Yes, he is. And actually he's from Southern Indiana also, by the way. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Good for now. Is he just like a deacon in the church? Or like a he is the deacon of um, shoot, uh, no, this is horrible. He's actually the deacon of hospitality. Okay, so he really takes you know comes over with you know you know making sure that people are welcome to the church. He's over the cleanup team uh, because we still have here in Virginia have some of the COVID nineteen restrictions on stuff. So mm-hmm. they clean, they like in between both services, they go through and they clean all the folding chairs and make sure that they're all wow, you know, wow. clean and stuff like that. So, uh, but he is in training right now to become an elder. You know, we've awesome. had a lot of conversations about we, uh, you were talking about junior elders yeah, I, and, I, and how we should be raising elders in the church. Right. Yeah. Like an elder in training. Mm-hmm. Right. That's under right. the eldership, but you know it has no real authority. But is they're, they're goes preparing to, goes to the same meetings, you know, is involved just like the elders are, um, as that kind of Paul to Titus or Paul to Timothy type right. of relationship. So, no, that's yeah, that's it, yeah, that's that's just cool. We we have this. And this is one of the things that um, I found interesting, even with with the church that we go to now, is that a lot of churches want to raise up to send out, mm-hmm. but very few of them raise up to stay. Right. 
And that's one of the things that I think most churches really need to start thinking about is, you know, uh, we always, you know, because I know different denominations have different methods of which they bring in new pastors and so on. But what's wrong with raising up the pastor from within your own congregation? Right. I mean, and training them up to, to be that 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 position. So I mean, we see that in the early church fathers. That's how it was. That's exactly how <laughs> so, it was. Yeah. So it's a biblical principle. Why not use it? Mm -hmm. I like it. So. I like it. Man, this Coca-Cola coffee is giving me both like coffee breath and coffee burps and Coke burps. I don't know what to do oh. with this right now. Just to, for you guys who are curious about our check-in on this Coke stuff, it tastes better, but I got the burps now. But either way, so so to get into to tonight's conversation, um, the reason why I'm like, this might be a fun conversation is you actually did a two-part series on your own podcast, What Does the Bible Say We've Been Talking About, of just false teachers. What are they? How do we spot them? And right. that's a topic that I feel like in today's church, it's not really cared about. Um you know, I know there's a lot of people on who listen to our podcast who are either young in the faith, they've honestly just come back to the faith, that they walked away for a little bit, they're trying to grow in their right. faith, and when they start interacting with those on the outside, um, not, not in the outside as in unbelievers, but more like, you know, there's so many pastors all over TV and YouTube and there's books, and, you know, just because it's in the Christian bookstore doesn't necessarily mean it's a good oh, yeah. scriptural Bible teacher, right? you know, and something that we're all about is... We want to be able to train and equip our people who are listening, both with church history, but also here's how to live, but also just how to think. Right. So I right. figured that, you know, with this conversation of, you know, what does the Bible say about false teachers, we couldn't bring anyone else better on this show than you to talk about it. Definitely. So so I figured that'd be a fun way to go into it. Um, so uh, before we even get into that conversation, though, um, I do want to ask one really quick question before we we dive in, because you're you've been an active listener of RTC for a while. So yes. I'm curious, do you have a favorite episode of us? Because we're 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 wonderful to listen to. <laughs> I have, <laughs> I have two. Oh, actually. okay. And uh, it, it's interesting because uh, it's the two that I first listened to that I, when I first found you guys. Uh, and the first, and I think it was the first one, one of them was one of them that I, I think it was the first one that I actually commented on, uh, on YouTube. And that was, uh, the, the witchcraft and wizardry. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then also does God choose us or do we choose God? That mm. was my, the other one, the second one that I listened to. So that's yeah. really cool. Actually. Yeah. Those, those are kind of both on different ends of the spectrum yes. there. I like it. Theology and Harry Potter. Yeah. <laughs> That's really fun. Uh, oh, anywho, so let me ask you the question, Ronnie. So what does the Bible say about false teachers? Okay, so there's it actually says a lot more than people think. Um, you know, we, we hear the, 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 the terminology or the phrase, you know, let the Bible or shout where the Bible shouts, whisper where the Bible whispers, right? We've mm -hmm. heard that a few times, even here lately. Um, however, a lot of people don't realize that the Bible does kind of shout about this topic, that, that there is a lot of bewares, right, mm -hmm. in the Bible about false teachers. And we're going to start off with Matthew 7, 15 through 20, which states, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So very, so every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased trees bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will recognize them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we can return to this one later because uh, there's, there's more to that or more that we can talk about on that one. Uh, the next one I have there is Revelation 2, uh, 2 through 7. And this is a letter to the church in Ephesus. I may not read this whole thing, but I'm, well, no, I will. Ah, go for it. We, we read some long <laughs> passages here. Hey, if you guys want to jump in and read, I'm good with it. Right? <laughs> oh, that's all you, man. You are the guest of honor. We get to sit back this and is enjoy. The, this is the easy podcast for us. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. Right, you can so, use it on your show, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. You remember this. I'll return the favor. <laughs> You're welcome. Anytime. Just, I'm not drinking that Coke. That's a <laughs> Make your pastor do it. You don't do it. <laughs> that's right. Revelations. All right, so we are in the book of Revelation, and this is two, Revelation 2, 2 through 7. This is a letter to the church in Ephesus. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance, and how you cannot bear with those who are evil, 
but have tested those who call themselves apostles and are not found or, and are not and found them to be false. <clears throat> I know you are enduring patiently and bearing up for my name's sake, and you have not grown weary, but I have this against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember therefore from where you have fallen, repent and do not work or do the work you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Unless you repent, yet this you have, you hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which also, which I also hate. Now, actually, I am going to stop there at, at verse six, because uh, we need to talk about like who were the Nicolaitans, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And right. So one of the theories on the Nicolaitans is that the Nicolaitans were kind of a bounce back from the uh, the uh, circumcision group, right? Mm -hmm. That there was this real big time legalistic group trying to teach people that they needed to become Jewish to become Christian, right? right? And so some people think the Nicolaitans were a response to that or an over response to that, to where they taught a false freedom, which mm -hmm. means that they were extremely liberal, if you will. Hmm. Right. Um, something that you can say that we're seeing today. Like a progressive Christianity almost? Right, yes where they bounce back to almost where they were allowing things that, you know, to live in sin, for example. Right. So, so that's kind of one of those theories that, and we can talk about that a little bit later too, about that whole bounce back principle. Um, but both of them would be considered false teachings, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it be the legalism or what the Nicolaitans were doing, which was that bounce back to a false freedom of, Hey, I can do whatever I want. I'm free to do whatever I want, right. no matter what. Yep. So, so that's kind of where we go with the Nicolaitans. Uh, next, we have Acts 20, 28 through 30. It says, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all of the flock. Now, when we think about that, that's this is more towards um, the church leaders. So he's saying, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. So this is, like I said, this is to the leadership, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that it's saying here is to not, not to look after yourself, which is important, right? To make sure that what you are teaching is correct. And it also tells us to make sure that we are paying attention to the flock. Mm -hmm. What are the flock looking at, right? What are they being exposed to maybe outside of your own community of the church? And it says there will be people who rise up among you. So within that body and within that local body, especially in, in this case, that are teaching or we're going to bring in things that are not true, mm -hmm. that are false teachings. And so um, it's one of those things where we have to, we have to pay attention to that as church leaders. And uh, I think uh, actually it was um, John Piper that actually refers to this passage as well. And when he talked about this subject mm -hmm. uh, where we, uh, we have a responsibility as church leaders to make sure that we're pointing out false teachers. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit too, I'm right. sure. Yeah. yeah. And let yeah. me ask you this, Rodney. So with you being an elder in the church, um, mm -hmm. are you just a lay elder? Or are you actually like on the paid pastoral staff? I am a lay elder. So for so you, full time job. so you do have a full time job. So for you yeah. as a lay elder though, do you still mm -hmm. hold the responsibility of protecting the church doctrine? Yes. Now in is our church, yes. now is that a easy task to do? Is that a difficult task? Like from your end as an elder, uh, it, it can be. It can be difficult um, because a lot of times you find a lot of the false teachings, like we uh, said earlier about you know, like going to, when you walk into a bookstore, right? Right. Uh, and you walk into a Christian bookstore, and there you'll find a lot of books that are in there that have false teachings in them. Right. Yeah. And so you can guarantee that you have congregants, members of your church that are going into those bookstores and buying those books and reading them and then quoting them in community groups. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. so, so those are, so that, that's part of watching out for that. And sometimes you have to pull the member of the church aside and have that conversation. So, yeah, and it, it is difficult. I'm going to, I'm going to go down that rabbit trail a bit. Have you had to do that to somebody? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. Hmm. 
and it, it's not it's not fun. No, <laughs> never um, is. And it's something that has to you have to be. And we'll and we're going to talk about this a little bit too yeah. you know, more. But just even on this more specifically, you have to be very prayer, prayerful, and you always have to remember to have respect. Mm. You know, when you're when you're discussing this with a person, and make sure that you're not putting it on them, but putting it on the book that they're reading. Right, is is the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. So I like it. I like it. Yeah. Thanks for that segue. Let's keep going though. Okay. What else we got? Okay. So, uh, we have first Timothy one, three through 11. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain in Ephesus so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies, which promote s- speculation rather than stewardship from God that is by faith. The aim of our charge is to love that issue, or wait a minute, the aim of, of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and good conscience and a sincere faith. Certain persons by swerving from these have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they are, they make confident assertions. And I'm just going to go ahead and stop there because this, this really attains to, for example, um, you know, how we're told in first Timothy and Titus about the leadership, the requirements for leadership for Mm -hmm. a church. If you bring somebody in that's too new. And like I said earlier, this was something that happened to me, uh, when I came to Christ and then became a lay elder, Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you that I came in way too early. And I, there's definitely a possibility that I may have been teaching some things that were not correct back then. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really had to go back and step back back then and look at the the chaplain that was at the squadron and say, hey, can you please make sure I'm not messing up? Hmm. You know what I mean? So you have to have that wisdom, even if you are still, if you don't feel real confident in teaching something, then it's good to get that opinion, mm-hmm. right? To make sure that people are looking at what you are teaching so that you're teaching something that is proper. Mm. So, and so, yeah, I, I think that this is really what, what's happening here. Sometimes you have young Christians and I'm sure you guys have seen them too. They become very, very, yeah, I want to go be a pastor. And you're like, dude, you've been a Christian for two days. <laughs> <laughs> yep, calm down a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's important to make sure that our, that the people that we're, that we're bringing up, understand that it does take time. Right. I mean, even Paul was what, three years before he was, you know, allowed yeah, three to really years catch. in the desert. Well, yeah. look at it. every disciple was three years with Christ before. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, right. that's kind of, kind of seems to be the standard back then, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of like the, the golden nugget of why people go to, you know, seminary or even right. Bible college to get that training. Cause it, it, I don't think people know until you start to teach the weight that comes with that, you know? Right. And I don't think I understood the weight until I was a full-fledged, you know, youth pastor teaching two, sometimes three, four times a week. And that burden's heavy once you realize, oh, what I'm teaching can really stir some, like it can steer someone away. And as as a teacher taking full responsibility, knowing that, hey, I'm accountable to God for what I teach. Right, because teachers oh, yeah. are going to be judged more than right. anybody else for Man, their that teaching. Is, that, is that is scary. That is scary. It is. You got to say, I mean, I, we all have to say before God and give an account, but, right. you know, as a teacher, it's like whole, like even for just our podcasts, right. like we're responsible oh, yeah. to God for anything that comes out of our mouths. Like, absolutely. Oh, goodness. I mean, hopefully I don't have to answer for why I drank this Coke coffee, but <laughs> you're, you're hung up on that. I am you? hung up on it because I am very, I, you know how long I've been waiting for this? I'm trying to figure it out if we can call that sinful or not. I don't know. We should. It, <laughs> it doesn't taste good. You notice good. how this has been sitting over here. Mine's been like, oh, to the <laughs> but side. But you brought, you brought 20 beverages to drink, bro. I have one. I was going to say, I see the bubbly there. So. Yeah, that's... You got the bubbly. <laughs> it's a it's a favorite. <laughs> this is a new flavor. I it's keep a looking. Mango. I see Kool-Aid jammers over there. I'm about ready to go take one. Yeah. But no, let's, <laughs> let's keep going to 1 Timothy, though. All right. So actually, I'm going to move down to 1 Timothy 6, 3 through 10. Uh, which says, if anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accord, that accords with good godliness, he is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy, dis, uh, dissension, slander, evil suspicion, and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and depraved of tr- of the truth. Imagine that godliness 
is a means of gain. This is something that I, I look at and I go, man, so yeah, a means of gain. Uh, you know, it, so they're using, you know, godliness as a means of gain. Right. It's almost and like so, a manipulation. <laughs> right. Uh, and this is something that's interesting because uh, a lot of people don't realize this, but there was a guy named Paul of Samosita. I don't know if you've ever heard of him or not. I was just listening to a, a study on him on my way over here. Were you really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know the name, but I'm trying to think of what he was or who what he yeah. did. He Wasn't he 5th century? 6th century? Uh, no, no, I think he was 3rd or 4th century. Was he 3rd or 4th? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but he used he used the Christian faith for power and massing, amassing wealth. Yep. Yeah, he was he was essentially a prosperity gospel preacher. I was going to say he was the Joel Olstein of the day. Wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So so that's the, even even the Bible speaks out against this right. about about using, you know, the the gospel for financial gain, for right. for massive financial gain. Now this does not and now understand this goes beyond the whole muzzling the ox that's treading the, you know, treading the grain, right? Right. We got to remember that that is important, that our pastors do deserve a salary. They do deserve, you know, you know, double honor. But what this is talking about is ex- exactly what we just said, the, the Paul of some, you know, Paul of Samosita situation. Right. So, right. Yeah, uh, so, so, no, go ahead. For we, we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing with these, we will be content. So we're supposed to be content, Right. We're supposed to be content as church leaders, right? So, if the church leader is not content and he's living living for the world, is he really doing this for the right reasons? Right, right. Preachers and sneakers. That's, all That's I what I was thinking. <laughs> so, so so far from these verses, I, I'm kind of seeing in three things rise to the surface when it comes to what does the Bible say about false teachers? Is one, I mean, obviously they just teach incorrect doctrine, flat mm-hmm. out. Um, whether it's you know. Prosperity gospel, word of faith movement, um, legalism, progressivism. Ba- basically, if they're preaching anything contrary to the gospel, that counts. Another one is people who teach. Uh, this is what I want to ask you a question about, because it seemed like in that first passage, what was that, Matthew 7, where it was talking about the root fruit idea, where the fact of you'll right. know a false teacher by how they live. So I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get back to this. Like, you know, I'm listening to a podcast right now called The, the, the Fall of Mars Hill. Uh, okay. Christianity Today is putting it on. Uh, it's I, I I was a big Mark Driscoll fan. I followed the man for years. He was mm-hmm. very instrumental to my belief. So when it all went down, it shook me pretty hard. Yeah. Um, and so they're talking about the fact of he preaches the Bible. He expounds on it. He's not incorrect in his teaching, but then his actions didn't match what right. he was supposed to be as a pastor. So I want to right. curious what your thoughts on someone like that is. And then yeah. someone who is... Um, basically in it for the wrong reasons would also count as, as a false teacher. Would you say that's a fair assessment? Like kind of those three factors? Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, when we say we won't know them by their fruit and I was going to talk about this a little later in the podcast, but always oh, jump in the uh, gun. Oh, I always <laughs> do that. No, no, it's okay. It's absolutely okay that we can jump. in. Oh no, he, he yells at me. Cause I'll jump like 10 questions ahead in our, our personal <laughs> show notes. He's like, I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm like, like read bad. the show notes. I'm building <laughs> <laughs> my bad, but, my bad. But no, this is, this is a good segue for that, that, that this ver or this passage is actually a good segue into that. Um, and also, and like we said, Matthew, right. Um, the, the thing is, is that a lot of people confuse when we say the fruit, right, of a ministry, a lot of people think that we're talking about numbers, mm. and that's an inaccurate thing. We are not, just because somebody has, you know, a thousand people in their pews on Sunday morning does not mean that that is the fruit, right? right. The fruit of the Spirit is what we have inside us, right? It's what we are putting out. It's also what it, we are passing on to to the people, right? Because they're going to see how we live. Right. Uh, when we raise up uh, people in the church, when we raise up youngsters to become disciples, right? They should also be learning how we live our lives. Mm-hmm. They should see that relationship with our wives. They should see that relationship with our kids. They should see that kind of stuff. And they should see that, hey, this is how, look, this is how I'm supposed to live also. Right. And if we're living not in accordance with scripture in our outs or outside the church, they're going to notice that. And what, what does that turn them into? Right. They think mm-hmm. it's okay. And, and so it's going to show through the people that come up underneath them as well. Well, and the Bible talks about us as teachers being above reproach. 
I mean, that's right. that's basically what you're saying is being above reproach in all aspects of our life, not just on Sunday mornings. Right. So yeah, and now there's I mean the above reproach thing also is to have nothing that anybody can get their hooks into you. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. So, right. Yes, that, I mean, that's very key. And, right. and at the end of the day, I mean, we're all we're all sinners. We all fall short. But that's a call for those who deem themselves as teachers. And, you know, I, I wonder if this adds a different element into today's world, because before, you know, teachers were people who had the microphones, who had the platforms, who, right. you, you, you know, like there was one Spurgeon. There was one of, you know, John Owens. There was one of these different people. But nowadays... Everybody got Instagram, and everybody's sharing their faith oh, and yeah. their and their teaching their and their opinion. So I'm curious. But even back then, though, I mean, a man was still the teacher, in teacher his of his house. house. Right. He was still the teacher That's of right. those he worked with. I mean, it's, it's always been kind of there that you've always had that influence, especially men, being that we are are placed in the role of head uh, of head of the household, mm-hmm. um, and and are naturally are supposed to be more of that leadership role um, in our community. So. Um. Yeah, I, I think that I think that that. Yeah, so we yes, all have a, we all have a role to play in we, teaching, but th- th- though it may not be a public teaching role, we still do have a teaching role. Mm-hmm. Now I yes. get we're kind of gearing this whole podcast more towards Mainly false teachers like, out in the public you know, form, but right, whether right. pastors or big time communicators. I want our listeners to also remember that we are still teachers at home, and we can still be false teachers to mm-hmm. even our spouse and to our kids, and we have to watch right. that. So I just want to throw that out that's, there. Dang, that's a challenge. Every time you lash out and I lashed out in anger towards one of my kids, am I being a false teacher and a false representation? Like repre- well, you're still, of Jesus? you're still a, a, a uh, saved person with sinful tendencies because of the Well, it goes back to of, justification, sanctification that we've right, talked exactly. about. It's right, exactly. Sanctification is a process. So uh, you're not going to be perfect all the time. Right. Um, it's what you do when you do those lash outs that you know are sinful do you just leave it that way or do you go and say, Hey, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. And that's well, where I mean, that's you guys, where you guys, you guys talked about, uh, you know, um, <laughs> St. Nicholas, you know, Jack slapping areas. Right? <laughs> I still think that's so, the greatest church history story of all time. It, no it is, question. Jack, I, Jolly St. Nick, Nick, fat, happy guy, literally full fledged. I, I hope he backhanded him, man. Just full fledged, <laughs> just straight arm. But, but, but what did he do? What did he do directly after? Right. Didn't he pray? Yep. Yeah, he mourned over his sin. Right. Yeah. Yep. And so, that's what it is. I mean, we're going to sin, but it's what do you do after that? And how do you respond? Right. And, and even, you know, I, I, I was having a conversation with someone else about this too. And they said the biggest difference between someone who is, for lack of a better word, a sinner and someone who just they sin is the response of David. You know, like when Nathan came and told him the the, the parable and he said, oh, by the way, yeah, that like the person who stole the sheep, that's you, boss. And what did David do? Like homeboy tore his clothes and, you know, Mm -hmm. ashes and repented and begged for mercy, even though he did one of the most heinous, well, two of the most heinous acts that are known to man. And, and I'm not saying that that was okay and it's not okay, but at the same token, he instantly was like, I messed up. And there's a level of humility with that, I think too. But, but let me ask you this. Go ahead. Go ahead, Roddy. You can look at the, you can look at the difference between uh, how did uh, Peter react to his own, you know, you know, you know, when he disowned Jesus, right? Oh, he went away and cried because right. he was ashamed. It, in comparison to Judas, right? So when you compare those two, two, two different actions afterwards, there's there's a there's a difference there. So. So I, I might be jumping the gun a little bit even more with this next question. I like to do that. Um, but if there are pastors and teachers and cause a lot of our people, you know, they're, they're, they're just people in the church. They're just, they're, they're trying to figure right. out Jesus or they love Jesus. And they're just, they're, they're, they're just servants with teachers. And I mean, I've already said names and I'm only saying it because it's a public platform. Um, you know, Mark Driscoll's, the Perry Nobles, the James McDonald's, these guys who were removed from their post because of the way they conducted themselves. Right. Would you deem them as false teachers and we should do away with their resources and with their stuff? Or is it one of those things where they taught the Bible well, so we can just take what they taught because all truth is God's truth. Um, I mean, that's something I'm personally am, am wading through as well. Well, I mean, what do you do with Rabbi Zacharias? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> exactly. And the, that he, and the stuff that he taught because he was, he was theologically, you know, 
correct 90% of the time, 98%, right. 99, 100% of the time, right? Whenever he was doing his apologetics. Um, and, and it goes back, it, it, it goes back to the saying of, I think, you know, you, you eat a fish, you know, you eat the meat, you spit out the bones and you have to have some discernment. And that's where the right. eldership team teaching you should be stepping in and pointing out, yes, right. this is correct teaching. No, this is not correct teaching. And right. then amongst now, the elders, I, it should be each other. I, I do have an opinion about that though. All right. Oh, <laughs> all right. Let's give it, it to us. And this, this is opinion. What does know, Rodney say? Of this. Uh, I think that whenever, you, whenever you like, for example, read a book from like mm -hmm. a, a Driscoll, right? Mm -hmm. If the, teaching that's in the book from cover to cover is solid, right? Is it false teaching? So that's, that's my question to you guys. No, is that mm -hmm. false? Teaching? No, it's not. Yeah. So there's everything in there would be solid teaching, but because he had great head knowledge, doesn't mean he had you know, a good heart. Right. Right. Yep. So the teaching is still solid mm -hmm. and you can still take that teaching and use it. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you get to somebody whom you know has a false teaching included, right? So mm -hmm. I know you said, you know, you eat the meat from the fish and spit out the bones. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is if you look at uh, like Joel, a Joel Olstein book, I would rather tell somebody don't even touch it. Yeah. So I, I guess I was more talking about the teacher and their teachings in general, the whole. So like Mark right. Driscoll, one book cover to cover is theologically sound. That's the meat. Right. But then he's got right. another book that has some false teaching in it. That's the bones. So don't even worry about that. So right. I guess I would say okay. I, I kind of agree with you on that. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's just it. And, and, you know, this is something that we've talked about um, uh, episode, I don't know, like five or six with the music conversation with Soche. Mm. There's certain songs that our church just doesn't do. And, mm -hmm. um, now sometimes we don't do songs because they're just, they're, they're not good. <laughs> like not even theologically, they're just not good songs. Like the, <laughs> the quality the wise. rhythm and the cadence and the stuff like, man, we used to do some hymns back when I was at an independent fundamental church where it's, you, one Sunday was really great. Cause you knew all of them and there's all the different parts. And then the next week we're like, no one knows this stuff. And why did anyone write this? Cause you, it's not singable. It's just not good. Um, but there's certain songs that our church has chosen not to sing, and it's not there's nothing wrong with the songs, but it's right. more the fact of, okay, well, who wrote that, and where, where did it come out of, and are there still songs that speak the same truth, mm. and do we need to take those? Do we, do we, do we have to have this specific <clears throat> song from this specific group, or are there other songs out there from more theologically sound groups, and we can unashamedly teach our church, yeah, Follow the group, follow the music. You're going to be blessed. It's, you know, basically it has our stamp of approval. I know that's a whole different conversation. Actually, it's not too much of a different conversation. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, because when you, when you look at music, right. Um, where does, a, think about it like this. If you're walking out of church, what do you remember? The songs. The songs, right. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people remember. A lot of people even sing some of the, the words as they're driving home from, from church. The thing is, is if you have solid teaching songs, mm -hmm. then they're still getting solid teaching from that song also. Right. Um, so when you also think about the um, how we pay, like churches pay for their their rights to be able to sing songs. Right, with the CCLI church. stuff, right. Mm -hmm. Right. So who who's getting that money? Right. And this is kind of one of my thoughts on that. Am I supporting a false teaching ministry mm. if I'm using songs from those churches? That's a good point. And <laughs> it's a really money, good point. Yeah. And then that money goes to that ministry See, that's teaching false teaching. This teachings. is why I like listening to Rodney. We should just shut up and just let him run the show. <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea a lot. So when it comes to music, I mean, it, it sounds like it's one of those things where just because the Christian radio station plays, it doesn't mean we should, I mean, I don't even listen to Christian radio, so I don't even know always what they're playing in all honesty. Last time I turned it on, they played Jeremy Camp stuff from 2008. And I'm like, guys, come on, there's been new stuff yeah. for Step oh, up, yeah. K-Love. But, you know, with <laughs> with music, with all these different things, you know, um, this is how kids learn. I mean, this is why VeggieTales has so many songs. This is why so many kids' things are around songs. Like, even my mom had little songs for us, like, when we were going places, like she was a teacher. So it's like we had the potty song, but then we also yeah. had Jesus loves me because you remember in song and cadence. Mm -hmm. um, right. So um, I do think I, I'm, I'm just going to take over this real quick for a second. I think we're going to come back for a part two. 
Yeah. I think <laughs> we're going to come back for part two. But I want to make sure we end this episode on something that people can take away with and then chew and process for a week. So okay. so let's land the plane with this episode, specifically talking about music. And then we'll come back next week and talk about the questions of what are some of the common false teachings of the church today? Are there mm. any false teachers in today's church? Is it okay to call right. them out? What do we do if we spot a fault what teacher? Do, what do we How do, do we do? spot them? Yeah, there's yeah. still a lot of conversation left to have. Right, right? so so I want to <laughs> oh, end yeah. this conversation specifically around the idea of with music, what should we do to A, protect ourselves from sound doctrine, and also just, you know, let's be honest, enjoy music that we actually like. So land the plane for us, Rodney. So one of the things is, like as a, as a church elder, right, uh, one of the things that we do is we have our assistant pastor is actually over the, the uh the ministry team, so over the the worship team, and so when people suggest songs, he will go basically proofread the song, mm. you know, and does this song actually have solid scriptural backing? Does it have solid doctrine being taught in it? Just to make sure that what we are putting out to our congregations are <laughs> is correct. Right. Um, and also the other thing is is you can see, you know, we just talked about, you know, what we pay, right? And and where that money goes to. So that's another thing he has to look at. Mm. Where, where is this money going to? Are we supporting a, a ministry that's a false ministry if we use this song in our church service? Especially since we're doing live streams now. Every church out there is doing live streams yeah, now. Yeah, right? right. And so because that those those license numbers are put you know put out there they know exactly what song you are using and they are going to make sure that that ministry gets that money yeah so i would suggest that the ministry teams at churches really make it, take a hard look at the music that we're that we're that we're singing mm. so so yeah. no more reckless love because God ain't reckless. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are there any are there any bands that you personally love listening to that you think our listeners should, should check out? Water's Edge Church Praise Team. <laughs> <laughs> Just take Great. it what it is. I love it. <laughs> oh, He's like, good. I guarantee it's all theologically sound. I was not sound. ready for that. I was not ready for that answer. That was I was perfect. expecting like vertical worship or city of light. No, just Water's Edge. I'm still going to say Gaithers. <laughs> You're going to say Gaithers. Oh. Yeah, Gaithers, yeah. Go for the Gaithers. I, I, I enjoy the Gaithers, actually. See? Oh, I love See? it. Well, hey, so so let's <laughs> let's go ahead and end this episode. We'll come back for a part two, but I don't want to just end it yet because well, we, we always have to. we got a couple of things. we got a couple of things we got to do up. before we go. But should we jump into our fun facts with Fuller? Let's jump into let's it. Let's do oh, wait, it. Wait, 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 Uh-oh. wait, wait, wait. First thing is the coffee I'm drinking. Oh, oh we forgot oh, to ask. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. The coffee I'm drinking is Column 15 from Richmond, Virginia. Column so 15. I've never heard of that. Always go locally sourced or locally roasted coffee. It's always the best coffee. It's true. I, I agree. I agree. Zen Cafe from here in South <laughs> Bend's phenomenal. That's just South because Bend chocolate. Well, a lot of it we drink is my roast. That's so. true. <laughs> there you go. That <laughs> is legitimate <laughs> single origin. I'm waiting for single roast. By the way, That's oh. I know. We, I know. We need to send you some. I have some <laughs> roasted. We'll send them some. Oh, you do have some roasted. I have we'll some have to do right it. Now. Oh, I'm like Rodney. I'm sorry. We even we were just so we were hating on Coke. <sighs> Man, yeah, it was so nasty. <laughs> we were just hating yeah, on he the finished Coke. it. I finished it because I needed to drink some because I'm sweating because it's like 90 degrees in this church. It is, but that's all right. Oh goodness, let's get some fun facts, all my right, dude. Let's hear it, man. Time for fun facts with Fuller. <laughs> <laughs> I love that laugh every, every time. Every time, gets my me. dude, what do you got for me? All right, Rodney, listeners, and Mark, did I'm you ready. know? Ready. In the 16th century, Turkish women could initiate a divorce if their husband didn't provide enough coffee. Shut up! Today, this would what? be unheard of, but coffee was an integral part of Turkish society back then. It was introduced in the country in the 15th century, and by the 16th century, they had mastered the art of coffee. Coffee became so popular, it seems that it became grounds wow. for divorce. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's the bad. fun fact of the day. My goodness. Actually, I can add to that. Uh-oh. All right, let's hear it. I'm going to stop I've the music just been, in case. I've been to Marmaris, Turkey. Oh, really? So here's an interesting good? concept of that. Did you know that before 
a man and woman are married in Turkey, the first thing she does for him is make him coffee. And it has to, to be make good. make sure <laughs> that she can do it correctly. Wow. wow. Hey, Beth, do you hear that? <laughs> Janelle makes good coffee, so I'm not going to no, say anything. No, no. <laughs> I make the coffee every morning. Between all the different things, my V60, hey, my it's Chemex, too late. You've my already, AeroPress. The ink is already dried on the paper, man. You should have had her do oh. that beforehand. <laughs> but it's funny. Like, like, she won't even make it in the morning anymore. She's like, it, it just doesn't taste good. I know you love making coffee. It's your love language. I'm like, shut up. You're right. I'm going to go make some now. Grab the V60 and yeah. let's go. <laughs> it depends on the day. Like today was AeroPress um, Ke- Americanos. Chemex tomorrow? Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Yeah, maybe. she washed it, so we're good. <laughs> I'm going to start the music again. Oh, goodness, guys. I know I'm trying to rush to get through the end of this episode because Fuller's got to bounce really soon in this next episode. But that's next week, so you guys don't even know about that. But before we bounce, let's let's plug in our sponsor, Lifeway. we got to talk about CSB and Lifeway. So So, you're holding the Ancient Faith Study Bible right now. I am right there with the uh, tan leather. That's uh, that's a new addition to my book collection. I love it. I have the hardback uh, edition of that one. You do, and that's why I kind of got it. So I, I like it because it's got a lot of what the early church fathers have to say. All the way up through the, I believe the sixth century or the fifth century, uh, something like that. Something yeah, like that. But anyways, Lifeway uh, brought you this podcast today with Rodney Buse, and uh, yeah, go check them out at right. csbible dot. And if you're looking for a premium Bible, they have a new one that they're actually dropping right now. The CSB Single Column Wide Margin Bible. Holman Handcrafted Collection Premium Black Goatskin. That's a lot of words. It's really it's <laughs> it's expensive, but it's pretty. But it, you it can is. pre-order right now for forty percent off, which what? is really really dope. You don't even need an RTC code. You don't even need to put anything special. Just Lifeways. Just Lifeway loves getting the Bible out to people. The CSB Bible. CSB Bible, oh, csbible.com is there where you, you can get all that information. But guys, we are so thankful you joined us for another edition of RTC with our friend Rodney Buse, Busey, I'm sorry, out of the That's What right. Does the Bible Say? We're going to be back next week with part two of this conversation, so don't go anywhere. But hey, until next time, guys. Take it easy. <laughs>